Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you in our church this morning. Um, if you are new or visiting, we would love you. We love to get to know you better. So please stay on and uh, uh, share some morning fellowship with us in the hub after the service. And we want to lovingly welcome you to our midst this morning. And uh, today we are starting an exciting series. Uh, on the book of Zechariah. And uh, uh, I was reading through the book of Zechariah the other day, and I've, I, I, I saw this interesting verse uh, in chapter 4, verses, verse 5. The angel said to uh, um, Zechariah, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. So Zerubbabel was building the city walls and the temple with Nehemiah. And the, the word from God for him was, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And it is the same for us. Those walls and the city pointed to the kingdom of God. And we are involved in the building of the kingdom of God now. Um, they were just pointers to the coming reality in the kingdom of God. And we are building the kingdom of God, not by stones, but by living stones, consisting of men and women from every nation, tongue, and tribe. And we do that by the power of the Holy Spirit in us. So let us, and Steve will bring the word to us this morning. And he will give us a very interesting overview of the book of Zechariah. And let us pray and commit this service in the Lord's hands. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you have given to us to gather together as your people, uh, to meet and to study your word and to lead a life that is pleasing to you, Lord. Lord, we pray as your word is spoken this morning, that you will give us clarity of understanding. And Lord, we pray that you will help us to obey your word and live according to it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. Please stand and let's sing our praises to our wonderful God and we can uh, have joy in our hearts. Stay. 
stand singing um, Blessed Be Your Name. Yes, our Lord's name should be blessed uh, because there is no other name like the name of our Lord because it is a holy name. It is a righteous name. It is a just name. And it's a loving name. And as we approach this great God of ours, the Bible encourages us to confess our sins and to God and to be right with him. And I want to read a portion of scripture from 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 to 10. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him, God, out to be a liar and his word is not in us. So I would encourage us to say this prayer that will appear on the screen together and 
as we confess, confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have gone our own way, not loving you as we ought, nor loving our neighbors as ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We deserve your condemnation. Father, forgive us. Help us to love and our neighbor and to live for your honor and glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Merciful Father, we rejoice that you pardon and forgive those who truly repent and trust in your Son. Deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. And keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we'll call the Emily and Band to come again and sing. Uh, this song is a new one for our church. Uh, it's called Take Heart. It's a beautiful uh, song with great promises, um, reminders of why we can take heart uh, amongst um, all the ups and downs in life. Thanks so much. Um, thanks so much to Emily and the band. That was awesome. That was really great. Thanks for leading us in worship. Um, for those who haven't met me yet, I'm Rachel. I work with the kids and youth here. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a great privilege to be able to spend time with the young people here at Sanhope. 
Um, this term for the younger ones, uh, preschool to year five, we're looking at parables um, in Matthew chapter 13. I've seen quite a few plants back there for visual aid that will be used this morning. And in youth church, we're looking at 10 uh, big truths um, this term. So before we dismiss and give you guys a chance to say hello to one another or to those sitting next to you, let's pray for uh, the leaders and the kids as they go out. Uh, dear God, we just give you great praise for the great God that you are. Um, thank you so much for loving us. Um, thank you that you're in control. And Lord, we just pray for um, the hearts and minds of all the young people here at San Hope. Um, Lord, that you would be planting seeds in their heart that would grow up, Lord, that they might become um, grown into the righteousness of Christ um, through your work on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, the kids and youth can head out. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let me encourage us. Hi, Edwin. Where's Edwin? There he is. Um, let me encourage us to, to come and grab a seat. Uh, it is wonderful to hear such noise as everyone's chatting to each other. Um, it'd be great to keep those conversations going over uh, morning tea in the hub afterwards. Um, there's, there's a lot of empty seats now because the kids have, have headed out. What a great blessing it is that... Uh, we have so many children as part of our church, and um, you m we may hear them during the morning. Um, it's a wonderful blessing to have them here as part of our church. Uh, my name's David. I get to serve as one of the assistant ministers here, and uh, if I haven't met you before, uh, I'd love the chance to get a chat with you uh, over morning tea later today. Uh, I have the great privilege of, uh, of leading us in prayer to uh, our Father, our Father of mercies and God of all comfort, and bringing our requests uh, and petitions to Him. So uh, let me lead us in prayer. Please bow your heads with me and uh, let's speak to our Father. Lord God, your scripture remind us, the scriptures remind us that you are the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. And so we praise you that this is who you are that you desire to hear our prayers to you. And we thank you that your heart is one that loves to hear and respond to your children. And we praise you, Father, that as we speak to you, our gracious God, we have a firm hope that you will bring us comfort and peace. So, Lord, as we speak to you now, may we continue to be people who rely on you, on your power and grace, on you who raises the dead to life. Uh, please hear our prayers now and respond to these in ways that will not be according to our will, but to your will, that it will bring praise and glory to your name. Father, for all of us, we pray that you will draw each of us closer to you as a branch to the vine, to remain connected to you in word and prayer, so that we would bear fruit for you in this world that individually we would live closely, walking with our Saviour each day, growing to know Him and to be more like Him in faith and obedience. We pray, Lord, that here at our church, here at Stanhope Gardens, that under You, 
we would see hundreds and hundreds of people in Stanhope Gardens and beyond find real hope in Christ. We pray that we would be light and hope to this community and that many would find the real hope that is found in Jesus. May we together want to know Christ more and more and to make him known. And so, Father, we pray, would you empower our efforts to do so? We give you great thanks, Lord, for the commencement of school across Sydney this past week, as well as for those who are starting kindergarten tomorrow. We ask that this new school year would bring great learning and maturity to all the children of this church and beyond. May they establish new friendships with their classes. May they be students who, who seek to show love to one another in their schools. And may the return to school requirements with masks and tests, may they not stand in the way of children enjoying and, contribu and contributing and learning in the life of the school year. As we think about schools, Lord, we pray uh, for uh, the SRE ministry at Kellyville Ridge, John Palmer Public, uh, Quakers Hill East and the schools in our area that uh, in, in a few weeks teachers will go into those schools and teach children about Christ. We thank you for the privilege of this ministry uh, that our church is involved in. We thank you, Father, that you make it possible for teachers to go into schools and teach and answer their questions about life and faith and the Lord Jesus. Lord, please protect this ministry in schools. We pray that you would provide for a new teacher that is needed at John Palmer Public. And we ask, Lord, would you give these teachers such a love for these students that they would prepare their lessons, pray for these children, and be ready to speak of the hope that is found in Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that last week and today we commence ministries across the church for life groups, for the ESL ministry, for Hope Youth and Kids Church. May we, through these ministries, continue to grow as a church that cares for one another and that is cared for by each other. May we grow as a church that is connected to one another through life groups or serve teams or simply through our relationships with one another. May these ministries continue to make more mature disciples of Christ across all ages, that we would con contribute to these communities, showing love and comfort to one another. And for those who lead or are joining these leadership teams, may they be able to see the great benefit of these ministries and their place within them. Father, we think beyond our borders and around the world, Lord, we, we pray for the country of Afghanistan now uh, that is now, uh, sadly, uh, the most dangerous nation for people to follow Jesus because of persecution. We ask for your protection over those who call on your name in Afghanistan. May those who believe in secret be protected from the violence of people around them. May those who lead the Taliban in this nation and for those who are actively seeking out Christians to persecute May they have their hearts changed through whatever means you have deemed worthwhile. May those who are being persecuted be strengthened to never waver nor renounce their faith. But, they, but may they be affirmed in their faith in knowing that Jesus alone is the way, the truth and the life, no matter what others may be saying. For churches both here and around the world who are supporting Afghan refugees... May they continue to be filled with an active grace and love to provide and care for them. And now, Father, we pray before hearing from your word. As we begin to look at the book of Zechariah, please prepare our hearts to be ready to hear from you now. Please clear away any distractions from this day or this weekend and help us to be ready to hear from you. May you lift our sights beyond the uncertainty of this world and towards the glorious work of what you are doing in this world and in the coming of your kingdom. As we, as a church, look through the book of Zechariah, please strengthen and mature our faith, grow our knowledge of you and what you are doing, and reset our eyes on the grandness of your work. And we ask this for the sake of the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Anne-Marie is going to come and lead us in the scriptures now. Good morning. The readings this morning are from Zechariah, verses 1 to 6, and chapter 14, verses 6 6 to 11. Zechariah, verses 1 to 6. The call to return to the Lord. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo. The Lord was very angry with your forefathers. Therefore, tell the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Return to me, declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. Do not be like your forefathers to whom the earlier prophets proclaim. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Turn from your evil ways and your evil practices. But they would not listen or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. Where are your forefathers now? And the prophets, do they live forever? But did not my words and my decrees which I commanded my servants, the prophets, overtake your forefathers? Then they repented and said, The Lord Almighty has done to us what our ways and practices deserve just as he determined to do. Chapter 14, verse 6 to 11. On that day there will be no light, no cold or frost. It will be a unique day, without daytime or nighttime, a day known to the Lord. When evening comes, there will be light. On that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem, half to the eastern sea and half to the western sea, in summer and in winter. The Lord will be king over the whole earth. On that day there will be one Lord and his name the only name. The whole land from from Geba to Rimmon south of Jerusalem will become like the Arabah. But Jerusalem will be raised up and remain in its place. From the Benjamin Gate to the side of the first gate, to the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananel to the royal wine presses. It will be inhabited never again. It will be destroyed. Jerusalem will be secure. This is the word of the Lord. Well, good morning. It's uh, nice to see you. Uh, special welcome if you're new, uh, if this is your, your first time with us, uh, and everyone uh, at home uh, as well. Uh, we, we're going to look at all of Zechariah this morning. So, you ready? It's going to be a bit of an overview. I'm guessing a lot of us are not that familiar uh, with this book, with this prophecy. Um, so today, be a bit of an overview, and then this term, we're going to get into it, um, yeah, week by week. Um, each section. Uh, So if Zechariah was a movie, uh, I wonder what the opening scene uh, would be. I'm picturing quite a harsh landscape, uh, desert-like, a bit mountainous, uh, but still spectacular. And there's a steady movement of people uh, moving across uh, the harsh uh, terrain. And the year comes up on the screen, 538 B.C., These are the people making the trek from Babylon to Jerusalem, uh, carrying whatever they can. Uh, They're returning home. Uh, They've taken up the offer, uh, returning to their own land. Uh, For 70 years, they've been in exile in Babylon. Uh, But now uh, Persia has taken power uh, and Cyrus uh, has given them uh, permission to return home. 
Uh, under Nebuchadnezzar, uh, they had been uh, captured, uh, Jerusalem, the temple destroyed, the people taken away, uh, 70 years in exile. Uh, for us, that would be um, something like if, if we'd um, lost a war, taken captive in, say, 1950, only to return in 2020. God's people are returning home, but just what are they returning to? Well, the camera then focuses in on one group of people. Uh, there's a young boy, and he's, he's falling behind a little bit, struggling to keep up. He's just muttering, are we there yet? How much further? This better be worth it. Then an older man uh, turns to him. Uh, he looks like a, a priest, and um, he's struggling for breath a little bit. Uh, but he puts his arm around him and says, come on, Zeke. We got this. The boy looks up at him, smiles, and they continue on their way. Uh, the camera then zooms out uh, as the sun starts to set. The next scene takes us to a, a section of the temple, and the date comes up on the screen, 521 BC. It's a bit of a ruin. Uh, it looks like there's been some attempt uh, to rebuild the temple, um, but... Really, it's quite pathetic. Uh, homes have been rebuilt, uh, but the, the temple, not so much. There is a man uh, amongst the, the rocks, the walls. He's wearing sackcloth. He's putting dust on his head, and he's weeping. He's praying. He's fasting. And then all of a sudden, uh, there is a bright light, and he covers his eyes and he hears a voice, Zechariah, yes, and it's the word of the Lord. And it says to him, the Lord was angry with your ancestors. Therefore, tell the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says, return to me and I will return to you. Do not be like your ancestors to whom the earlier prophets proclaimed. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Turn from your evil ways and your evil practices. But they would not listen or pay attention to me. Where are your ancestors now? And the prophets, do they live forever? But did not my words and my decrees, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, overtake your ancestors? Zechariah is left awestruck. Uh, the Lord has just spoken to him. And now he is the Lord's prophet uh, with this message uh, to take to the people who have just returned to the land. Uh, the return comes up on the screen. Uh, the scene has been set. Uh, lock yourselves in for a, a wild ride of epic proportions. The prophecy Zechariah. Now, there is no movie. Um, maybe there should be. It, it could make a pretty good movie. Now, what we have before us is that the prophecy of Ze um, Zechariah, and he is the son, it tells us, of Berechiah, the son of Ido. You know those guys? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, it's a priestly family, uh, and they, they've returned to the land. Now, this story uh, might be some... Uh, two and a half thousand uh, years old, but this is a message still for us today. Uh, God's word uh, still speaks uh, to us today. Uh, His word lasts forever. There's a timeline that's going to come up. Um, you can have a look at that, and that will just help um, place uh, where Zachariah is, uh, where we are today, uh, and a few other uh, key uh, events. And um, it is not to scale. Now, we might not have returned uh, from exile, uh, but if you like, we are slowly returning, coming out of COVID, from lockdowns, from isolation. Um, you, not, you may not be returning home. You might have spent the good part of the, the last two years nowhere but home. But as God's people returned home, returned to the land, uh, life had its disappointments, uh, life had its frustrations, 
Uh, not everything was as it was. Uh, and maybe that uh, is true for you as well. You can think of the things that you've missed out on uh, the last few years uh, or things that are just no longer the same. Uh, school has returned. Uh, things keep changing there, don't they? Um, parents, as you get kids ready and out the door, not just checking whether the, the teeth are done and whether they've got their, their lunch, but whether they've got the, the rat as well, and whether that, that is all done. What is God doing? Uh, maybe that is a question that you've asked yourself these last few years. What is God doing? Well, the prophecy, Zechariah, uh, is going to give us a big view of God. It's going to lift our eyes uh, beyond uh, the immediate uh, to His grand plan. And it's going to help us make sense of the world uh, here and now in light of the grand plan. Now, there is some weird and wacky stuff that you're going to uh, hear, uh, read as we get into this. And uh, some of you are going to love that. Uh, others are just going to be totally confused by it. But amongst all the, the visions, the imagery uh, of horses and horns uh, and flying scrolls and uh, a woman in a basket uh, with two other women with the wings of a stork, um, there is an overriding message the return. Zechariah's big message for the people uh, is simple. Return to the Lord. Return to the Lord. And it seems they do. It says, uh, as, as, he, as he told them, uh, return to the Lord, we're, we're told that they did. It says they repented. The Lord Almighty has done to us what our ways and practices deserve just as he determined to do. Uh, it seems that they acknowledged that the exile was fair, um, that they got what they deserved, what their ancestors had done, and they repent. They learn from their mistakes, the mistakes of their ancestors who did not repent. So it seems that they're willing to take Zachariah's words seriously. Uh, so this is good. Uh, a returning to the Lord, a people who want to see Him, seek Him, know Him. And that's what the Lord wants uh, from His people, uh, a people who will be His, a people who will love Him and obey Him, uh, a people who will have a heart for Him. Uh, no difference today, is it? Uh, God wants to know us, uh, and God couldn't love us anymore. He's given us His Son. He forgives our sin for our rebellion against Him. He gives us His Holy Spirit. Uh, he gives us the, the righteousness of Christ. Uh, and He doesn't just declare us right. Uh, he adopts us into His family as His children. Uh, how special it is to be children of God. And so every day, Every day we can take up our cross, and that is an opportunity to return to Him, uh, to seek Him, to love Him and His ways. Uh, it's a turning to and a turning away. A uh, turning away uh, from evil and selfish ways, uh, but turning to Him uh, with a heart that is aligned to the Lord and His ways. And it's a, it's a challenge uh, not just having Jesus as part of our life, uh, but having Jesus at the heart of our life. Jesus at the center, uh, driving it all. Uh, returning, repenting, uh, is not just a, a one-time occurrence uh, when you become a Christian. Uh, this is uh, continual. Uh, this is an ongoing part of the Christian life. Uh, God's people here returning to the Lord... Uh, that would mean uh, that they would enjoy His, his presence, His blessing uh, with them. And the same for us, as we uh, repent, as we return to the Lord, uh, that means we enjoy His presence, His blessings uh, with us. So the return, uh, it seems like they did it, and this prophecy would help them to keep doing it. And so may, may the same be for us. May this word of God help us to keep seeking the Lord, 
coming back to him every day, returning to the foot of the cross, seeing what Jesus has done for us. This prophecy will will keep driving us to Christ and the fulfillment in him. May it help us to want to know him more and more. That's not the only return uh, in in this this prophecy. Uh, There's another return on view, and that is the return of the Lord. The return of the Lord. Uh, As I've read through all of Zechariah and listened to it, uh, this has really stood out uh, for me, the return of the Lord and what it is that He will do. Uh, let me show you just quickly um, from, from all of Zechariah where we see this. So in chapter 1, uh, in verse 14, uh, proclaim this word, Zechariah. This is what the Lord Almighty says, I'm very jealous for, is- for Jerusalem and Zion. A couple of verses later, it says, I will return to Jerusalem with mercy, and there my house will be rebuilt. In chapter 2, verse 10, Shout and be glad, daughter Zion, for I am coming, and I will live among you. Jumping over to chapter 8, it says, I am very jealous for Zion. I am burning with jealousy for her. I will return to to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. I will bring them back to Jerusalem. They will be my people, and I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. All right, it goes on. Uh, we see this in every, every chapter, every few chapters, what God will do. He will be their God. They will be his people. And what he will do uh, is great. Uh, he is the, the great and awesome God, and His work is great. You see, He is committed to His people. He loves His people. He's committed to them. Uh, those who are married, um, remember the vows that you made, those promises you made uh, on your wedding day? Uh, you weren't asked, were you, uh, whether you do love your, your spouse to be, were you? Uh, men... Uh, You were asked, uh, will you, will you love her? Uh, You made a promise, a vow of what you will do, that you will give her the honour due to her as your wife, that you will forsake all others to be faithful to her, that you will love her and protect her always. Now, that was your vow, right? Right? I will, I will do this. Well, here in this prophecy, what we have is that the promises of God and Him saying, I will, Him saying to His people, I will, I'm committed to you, I will do this. This is His vow, I will. He loves His people, they're dear to Him, He's committed to them. And he wants them, he wants us to be committed to him as well. We know how much he loves us. He could not love us anymore. He's given us his son, his one and only son, has died for us. Brought us back into relationship with him. Now for God's people, as they returned, our life in Jerusalem uh, was not great on their return. Uh, it was not great. And the temple it was really a poor excuse for, for a temple. Uh, they were to rebuild it, um, but it wasn't looking real good. But this prophecy, for them as they hear of what God will do, uh, will give them hope, a sure hope, that the future, their future with God, the future for Jerusalem is good. This is what these visions, this prophecy is all about, uh, their future and what God will do. Uh, so again, here are just a, a few verses uh, going um, right throughout, uh, hearing what God will do. So in chapter 1, verse 17, he says, My towns will again overflow with prosperity, and the Lord will again comfort Zion and choose Jerusalem. 
In chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, Jerusalem will be a city without walls because of the great number of people and animals in it. And I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord. And I will be glory within. In chapter 8, Jerusalem will be called faithful city. Once again, men and women of ripe old age will sit in the streets of Jerusalem. The city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing there. Verse 23, in those days... Ten people from all languages and nations will take firm hold of one Jew by the hem of his robe and say, Let us go with you, because we have heard that God is with you. Chapter 9, verse 9. Maybe you've heard this verse. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. Verse 16, the Lord their God will save his people on that day as a shepherd saves his flock. They will sparkle in his land like jewels in a crown. Chapter 12, verse 3, on that day when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for the nations. And last one, chapter 14, verse 9, the Lord will be king over the whole earth. On that day, there will be one Lord and his name, the only name. See, they can be assured, we can be assured that the future is good with God. It mightn't have looked that great for them right now upon their their return, but they can be assured God will do this great work. They had their building project, um, which was the temple. Uh, But God has his. And bigger than the temple, uh, he is building his kingdom. People from all nations, uh, which will blow their their temple um, out of the water. What God is going to do is big. It's marvelous. The kingdom of God. This is what he's doing. He's gathering together a people for himself. A people from all nations a people who will know him and love him, a people who will enjoy relationship with him, with one another. They'll enjoy his presence and his blessing. Uh, 500 years, a little bit over, uh, between Zechariah and Jesus. Uh, that, that is where we are with this. When Jesus comes... What are some of his first words? The first words that we have of Jesus recorded in Mark's gospel are what? What does Jesus say? Mark 1, uh, verse 15. He says, The time has come. The The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. In Jesus, the kingdom has come. What does Jesus call people to do? Repent and believe the good news. Repent, return, come to the Lord and believe, believe in Jesus, believe in who he is. Jesus is God's son. He is the one come to bring in God's kingdom. Uh, What we will read in Zechariah will find its fulfillment ultimately uh, in Jesus Uh, in his coming and his return. We live now between that coming of Jesus and his return. And so we look forward to the kingdom coming in all its power and glory uh, when Jesus does return. And so this prophecy gives us a big view of God. Uh, Zechariah calls us to return to the Lord, to be a part of his kingdom. And for us to see the world, uh, not through the eyes of the evening news uh, or through the the eyes of of Facebook or or TikTok, but to see the world as God sees the world. And that is big, a big view. Zechariah will help us to see what it is that God is doing, what he's done, what he continues to do. 
And it's an invitation. It's an invitation to get on board with him, to return to the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise for the great God that you are. We thank you so much for for Jesus, that he's made it possible for us to know you. And Father, help each one of us um, to have that desire to want to know you more and more. And those areas in our life that we, we need to turn away from, help us to do so. Help us to turn to Jesus and to do so every day. Coming to him, asking for forgiveness. And as your people, knowing who we are, that we are your children, give us a big view of yourself and your kingdom and what that means for us day to day as we go about um, work and school and whatever it is that we are doing. Father, teach us this term through your prophet Zechariah more about yourself and give us a longing, a real longing for the kingdom and the return of Jesus. Amen. Uh, Can I encourage you, if you haven't already, um, start reading Zechariah or listen to Zechariah. Um, Get into it and be praying that God will show you uh, great things and that he will change you from this part of your word. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Let's raise our voices now uh, because we have no love that is greater and we have a God who um, is for us. Um, No one can stand against us, so please stand and let's sing this great song.
Now we're going to participate in the Lord's Supper. And as we prepare to participate in the Lord's Supper, the scripture tells us, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. So please examine yourselves and only then eat and eat the bread and drink the cup. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. At the heart of the Christian life is active trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrificial death for sin. In this symbolic meal originating from Jesus' last supper with his disciples, we express and strengthen our trust in him as we eat and drink with our brothers and sisters. The Lord's Supper is an outward and visible sign of the grace shown to us in the death of our Savior. As we share bread and wine together, we are invited to feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We are faced again with God's love for the unworthy and, the, and are strengthened by faith in the one whose body was given and whose blood was shed for us. Come then with heartfelt repentance and genuine trust in the Lord Jesus, recognizing the significance of sharing in this way. If in good reason or in good conscience, it would not be right for you to participate, please use this time to reflect on God's love for us in Christ. Now, join with me in saying this prayer of preparation, which will come up on the screen. Merciful Lord, we do not come to your table trusting in our own righteousness but in your limitless grace. We are not even worthy to eat the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, always rich in mercy. As we eat and drink these tokens of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, enable us to receive him by faith that we may be cleansed from sin and forever dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We thank you, Father, that on the night before he died, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took the cup and again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, we thank you for these gifts, bread and wine, and pray that we who eat and drink them in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, believing our Savior's word, may be partakers of his body and blood. To Jesus Christ, who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, may I call one from each row to come up and distribute these tokens to the congregation.
The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Lord, our Heavenly Father, in your loving kindness, Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant, grant us, granted by thy merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. With gratitude for all your mercies, we offer ourselves to you, as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let us receive the blessing from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.